Hey everyone, it is day nine of Vlogmas. It is just a little bit after 10 and I have had a really productive morning so far. I'm actually already getting tired because I've been up for hours and hours. I woke up at 5.30 this morning. I feel like I was channeling a little bit of Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady. I know she likes to wake up early and knit and get a few things done before the boys are up. And Glenn was up getting ready for work this morning. He went into the office and he kind of woke me up. So I kind of jumped on it when I was really awake. I thought I'm going to make the best of this. And I am so happy that I finally just bumped that wake up time a little bit earlier. I've been trying for so long that I'm really hoping I can keep it going. Even just 6 a.m. would be great for me. So I knit on my Cozy Knitter Advent socks this morning. I caught up on some of my favorite Vlogmases and tidied up the kitchen because even though I cleaned it yesterday, it's, it's pretty crazy. I'm gonna share because Glenn put together my new cabinet. It actually, it looked like a nightmare to do it, but he said it wasn't too bad. He's really good at building things like that. So he built it pretty quickly. Then he took a break. I put the shelves in where I wanted them. And then very late last night, he just put the doors on and the handles and the hardware and stuff. So it's ready to go. I've actually started putting something in the bottom. I've got things all over the dining room table, the kitchen table. I am so ready to style it up, but I also wanna make sure I'm using it properly for storage purposes. I'm really, really happy with it. It's beautiful. It's exactly what I had imagined or what I was hoping for. I've been struggling with that spot and with storage for years and I've actually often mentioned to Glenn that we should act, we should probably get a built-in like to match our kitchen cabinets and have something built into that space but he didn't love that idea and we knew it would be really pricey and then we couldn't change it if we wanted to switch it up one day. We do like to switch things up around here if you haven't noticed so I'm really excited to have I think the piece that I've been kind of waiting for for a really long time. It all just came together super quickly. I did not expect to be doing this space right now, but I'm really glad that it all worked out. So I'm gonna share a little bit of that with you today. I've already done my work this morning. I've done a whole bunch of emails and um, just some admin stuff for inventory and making sure I have enough supplies coming in in the next little while. And I am caught up with shipping. So I have a bag to drop off today. And uh, that might be my last stop for shipping this week because it's what, it's Thursday today. If I do get a few more, I'll probably pop out again tomorrow, but I'm hoping that this will be my last run out for shipping and that I can end this week off really quietly and just enjoy some time. I've been looking at some cookbooks. I still haven't pulled out my Christmas notebook. I just really want to get some knitting done, some meal planning done for the holidays, my cookie list made, all of that good stuff. So I'm excited about all of those things, but right now I'm most excited about styling up my new cabinet. date on my Cozy Knitter Advent Socks. I've got nine stripes for nine days on both socks and I am really loving how they're turning out. I think they're so pretty. So now I get to do the fun part that I've been waiting for. 
I need to deal with all of this stuff that I've been pulling off of the old cabinet and out of a few cupboards. I've got my table covered in a few pieces that I know I want to display in this cabinet because here it is. So I can't remember the name right now. I'll put it on the screen. It is a cabinet from Ikea. I can never remember their names. It has shelves with glass doors on the top and then it's a little bigger on the bottom and there are shelves in there as well. I think my favorite thing about this piece is the color. I mean, I love everything about it. It's so much bigger than my last one. It's taller, It's there's a lot more storage in the bottom, but it still fits pretty well in here. The only thing is our light switch is behind here, which is kind of a pain to get to, but I can live with that. So on the top, there are these beautiful glass doors. Glenn put it together pretty quickly last night. Um, he said it wasn't fun to do, but he's really good at putting things together. So I think he did it in about an hour and a half. And then I came and put the shelves where I wanted and he took a break. And then in the evening, like right before bed, he just put all the doors on and the hardware. And I love the hardware. It's gold, like a brushed gold, which is really pretty. And you can see I've already started putting a few things in the bottom portion. There's a lot of storage. And one of my issues in here was where to put table linens. So now I have a nice spot to keep everything. I put this shelf a little bit high up so that it would be perfect for tablecloths. My other one needs to be ironed, so I only have two for the new table. I've got one of those um, plastic protectors for the table because I don't trust my family. I've got linen napkins, um, a couple of table runners, and then the, there's another table runner under here and then more placemats. So everything fits in here and it's nice and close to the table, which makes me very, very happy. The shelves and the bottom, because they're all this really nice finish, um, the same finish as the outside, I'm kind of worried about scratching it. So I think I might pop out and get some clear cupboard liners or I'm not really sure. I guess for now I could use another uh, placemat just at the bottom. I just know with these really heavy Le Creuset pieces over time, if I'm pulling it out to grab it, it's going to probably leave marks. So on the second shelf, I've already put some more placemats. Um, I have quite a few of these. And then I put my two Le Creuset pots in here. This is the brazier. And then this is a really large um, Dutch oven that I got from HomeSense. And I think I got this one from um, HomeSense as well. I'm still thinking about what goes on the bottom. I think for now I'm going to put my surplus of cookbooks, some of my more recent ones that I like to keep in the kitchen. I think I'm going to house them in here with a few other um, serving pieces and dishes. And I am going to clear off this little rack and take it out of here. I just think with this bigger piece here and my table, I don't really need that little rack anymore. It's served me well, I've loved it. Um, but I just think the cleaner space here will be a lot nicer. And most of this I'll be able to fit in either my cupboard or in here now. And of course, this has transitioned me into another idea. They have a matching bookcase that goes with this. It is the same height. It is beautiful, the same color, same details. Um, it's just a tall bookcase. And my plan now is to put it in here. 
it's completely out of stock everywhere. So I think it's going to be a New Year's project, which is good. It'll give me a bit of a breather. But I think it would be perfect in this corner over here. And then I will remove the lamp. I might just keep one of these little tables because they're all, uh, they're three separate pieces. And then I will be able to store most of my most used cookbooks because let's face it, they are piling up everywhere again. And even though I'm trying to be careful, all of these ones here I've accumulated in the last like two years. And there are a few other piles in here that I can't fit on this cabinet anymore. So I think it makes sense to put a coordinating shelf back there because the shelves we have on the walls in here, they're a little bit more decorative and I don't want to put tons and tons of books on there. Um, I just think it looks really pretty that way. And then I could have a really functional bookcase over here with my most used cookbook collection. So I am just going to have a little bit of fun here and arrange things. I'm sure I will, I will be playing with this for a while until I get it right. Um, and I'll probably remember other pieces I have in the dining room or the basement that I've tucked away and I'll just play with it until it looks right and I feel like the shelves on the top are styled the way I want them. So I'm really trying to combine it looking pretty but also being really functional. Here it is all filled up with my things. I used pretty much everything that was out on this kitchen table this morning to style the shelves on the top and then put the more practical kitchen things in the cabinet below. I did end up putting a whole bunch of the cookbooks that were in the kitchen in the bottom cabinet and I know that won't be that won't be like that forever. I do think a small bookcase to help me with my cookbook storage is probably going to happen in the new year but for now it's working out really well because I did take away that kitchen cart here so I think it looks a lot more open and I love it here and I think I have maybe a few too many mugs up on the top that's probably going to change but this is just the first round of styling. I'm pretty sure I will switch things up a little bit, find a few other interesting pieces that might look pretty there. It's one of my favorite things to do is just kind of move things around and I'm just going to live with it for now and probably switch that top shelf up a little bit. And I think I'm going to put a cake dome or something pretty on the top as well. So here it is for now. I think it looks really good and I also really like how it's kind of opened up over here without that cart so I think I'm good with my new cabinet I do have a few things on the table in there and on my kitchen counter that 
didn't have a spot in here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a last tidy up. And then I'm gonna pull out a cookbook because I think I wanna make something this afternoon. I'm sharing a cookbook that I shared in Vlogmas last year again because it's just that good. So the Bread Toast Crumbs book by Alexandra Stafford is one of my favorite book purchases in the last year. Um, I think I purchased it either just before Vlogmas last year or during. And I have loved every single recipe that I've made from this book. And I was watching one of my favorite Vlogmases last week, Maria and Michael from Wool and Forest Knits. They were talking about making a recipe or two from this book and it just reminded me how good it was and so I pulled it out. I love a no-need bread recipe. I've tried a few. Um, this one is my absolute favorite recipe. It is on her website, so you can get it for free. It's called the Peasant Bread Master Recipe. And I think her website is Alexandra Cooks. I'll put it on the screen. It makes two little loaves. It's the one on the cover. It is so delicious. And this book has quite a few variations on this master recipe, which I love. Because as much as I like to cook, I really like easy to throw together recipes. I don't wanna to think too much, just like with my knitting. I don't want it to be overly complicated and fussy and I really, really love everything I've made of hers. This walnut bread looks delicious. But what had me thinking about this book was that Michael and Maria were talking about this porridge bread that they get at their local bakery, I think on Sundays. And it sounded so good. I d I've never had it. I don't know what it is. But I noticed that this recipe, and I think they shared this one too, has rolled oats and boiling water and maple syrup in it. So it would be a little bit sweet. And I think it would be so delicious with butter and jam. So I can use some of that jam for my advent calendar. So I'm really interested in making this one possibly for tonight. I think there was another one in here that Maria said might be more like the porridge bread, so I was just going to have a flip. This one is definitely on my to make list this season because James and I love olive bread. We love bread. And this one looks so good too, the apple, almond, and thyme bread. So it's a really, really beautiful book, but her recipes are excellent. They're done so well, they're very easy to understand, especially when it comes to letting things rise and a few different steps. She's really great at explaining everything. Um, the instructions are great and the recipes are delicious. Her, um, I don't even know if it's in this book, but her quick pizza dough recipe is my new favorite. I know I've gotten it off of her website in a pinch. I don't think that one is in here. But her recipes are gorgeous, and I know I shared this last year, but I just had to share it again. And if you, oh, that looks good. Pumpkin harvest bread. Also, this is the chocolate studded panettone that I made last Christmas. I got a pan for it, I was super excited. It turned out amazing. I will definitely be making this again. And in fact, I might make two of them and give one to my parents. So it's really, really good. You can find that on her website. So I think I'm just going to give this cookbook a little love again. I think it needs it. There's even a section here on some nice lunches or meals that you can do with the bread. I highly recommend this one. So I am going to make myself a cup of tea. I'm going to figure out which bread I might wanna make this afternoon so it will be ready for dinner. And I might, I'm trying to think about what soup I could make tonight. I haven't decided if I wanna make a tomato soup, French onion soup, 
which won't really work with my bread because French onion soup has bread and cheese in it or some kind of vegetable soup. So I'm thinking about that and I just wanted to share one of my favorite books with you once again.